There's no denying that Final Fantasy XI is a huge departure for the series. This is this really famous, great, big uh, Japanese role-playing series that's been around for years. It started way back on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And it's true that from one game to the next, the Final Fantasy series has had little in common. But one thing that's always been true is that every Final Fantasy game has been a single-player game where you control a party of adventurers and kind of uh, do in some evil force and save the world and all kinds of really interesting ep epic stuff. Final Fantasy XI is a huge departure because it's no longer a single-player game at all. It has no single-player element to speak of. You could only play the game online with other people. It's a massively multiplayer online RPG. It's, it's similar to uh, games that have already been released uh, on the PC, such as EverQuest, uh, last year's Dark Age of Camelot, Anarchy Online, and games of that nature. What this means is, in Final Fantasy XI, you create and control at any given point a single character and you take part in a, in a world that's occupied by a lot of other different players and you join together with them to defeat lots of uh, evil monsters and do the kind of Final Fantasy-esque stuff that you might expect. Uh, only the, the way you play the game is entirely different. So the concept of the game should still be appealing to Final Fantasy players. You, you know, the notion of leveling up and getting better stuff and, uh, and meeting interesting people and fighting big bad monsters, it's all, it's all still there. But Final Fantasy XI is certainly uh, the most unusual Final Fantasy game to date. Final Fantasy XI is out now in Japan for the PlayStation 2. It's coming out in this country uh, apparently in early 2003, also for the PlayStation 2, and a version for the PC is also planned. As a PC game, Final Fantasy XI would be pretty straightforward. You install it, you patch it up, you play it like you'd play EverQuest or Dark Age of Camelot or what have you. Uh, on the console, it's, it's a lot different, and it's actually been quite an experience getting the game just up and running. Granted, a lot of that comes from the fact that it's only out in Japan now, so we need to log in to Japanese servers and uh, do crazy stuff of that nature. But besides just buying the game, in order to play Final Fantasy XI, you need to have a, a PlayStation 2 hard drive, you need to have an internet connection, you need to be ready to pay a monthly fee for the game, and optionally you could also use a mouse and a keyboard. The game itself doesn't even run off of the disc that, that comes in the package that you buy. You actually install it to the hard drive along with Square's Play Online service. And this installation procedure is actually really quite involved. It, it literally takes uh, not just minutes, but probably a matter of hours uh, at least currently, between actually, you know, opening the DVD case that the game comes in and getting Final Fantasy XI to come up on your screen. You need to register for the service, install all the software, patch the program up to the most recent update. It all takes a lot of time, even if you have a fast connection. And that's the sort of experience that traditionally has been part of PC gaming, but it's very new. Uh, to console gaming and arguably uh, has no business being there. It, it really makes uh, the stakes very high for Final Fantasy XI to be a good game if you need to go through that much stuff just, just in order to play it. With requirements like that, it's little wonder that Final Fantasy XI hasn't done as well as uh, some of its predecessors since it's been released in Japan. It's, it's sold uh, quite poorly relative to other games in the series. But, but on the other hand, Square says that that's to be expected. The, the company acknowledges that this is a different type of game. They're trying to forge new ground. Uh, arguably, they tried to do the same thing with last year's uh, Final Fantasy The Spirits Within movie. Uh, this is another bold experiment for the company and, and an interesting one. And uh, it's, it's been interesting to be playing the game. We've been playing during off-peak hours, so we really haven't r run into too many other people during the course of the game, but we've still gotten a real good taste for how it actually all works. As in any game like this, uh, the first thing you do is create your character. There are a number of different races to choose from. There's one that's basically human. There's one that's basically an elf, only the, the ears stick out rather than up. There's like a catwoman race. There's a kind of giant male ogre race. And there are these little doll-like things that really make me mad, personally. I just, I just don't like them. You can name your character, you can choose a, a different face for the character, and you can uh, change the hair color and stuff like that. And you can also choose your character's initial job from things like warrior and monk and thief and white mage, black mage, and red mage. These are kind of the old uh, Final Fantasy standbys. 
Uh, they're actually Final Fantasy I character classes, I believe, and uh, from there, uh, you'll eventually be able to grow into other more powerful classes like uh, Paladins or Dark Knights or Hunters. Uh, the job system in Final Fantasy XI is reminiscent of the one in Final Fantasy V or Final Fantasy Tactics, and takes with it the coolest feature from those games, which is the ability to actually change jobs. That's probably the biggest difference between Final Fantasy XI and uh, other massively multiplayer RPGs. In most of those games, you create your character and you're stuck with it, pretty much the way it is. In Final Fantasy XI, you can change jobs so you can go from being a warrior to a mage or what have you, and you'll have to relearn those skills, but at least you, uh, uh, at least you have that flexibility. You can do a lot more as your character. Otherwise, the game does play a lot like uh, other games of this nature. You start out in one of three big starting cities and can kind of uh, run around, and talk to some of the computer-controlled characters and get your bearings, or go out into the wilderness and start fighting. Combat in Final Fantasy XI is a lot like combat in a game like EverQuest. You basically select a target, initiate combat, and watch as your character starts trading blows with whatever it is you're fighting, and you cross your fingers and hope you beat it before it beats you. It's a change of pace from the traditional turn-based Final Fantasy combat, but it still is a pure turn-based system at its core. It's uh, just looking at your character's speed rating versus the monster's speed rating and doing some math under the hood. You pretty much do sit and watch, uh, although as, as you gain new special abilities, you'll be able to trigger those uh, whenever you want, though you don't start out with that many. Like any Final Fantasy game, uh, Final Fantasy XI will definitely encourage you to not do things on your own. It'll encourage you to join up with other players and, and fight in groups. And you'll find that the different jobs uh, support one another, you know, like the, uh, a black mage with his uh, damaging spells might be pretty effective, but all the more so if there's a warrior and a monk standing in between him and the enemy he's nuking. The game certainly looks good on the PS2. Uh, the frame rate is actually pretty slow, but other than that, there's a lot of detail in the character models. The animations look really good. Uh, if you played the recent Final Fantasy X, then you'll find a similar uh, level of graphical quality in this game. Uh, graphics are something that are clearly very, very important to Square. Uh, they put a tremendous amount of effort into the game's intro cinematic. It's, it's really cool. And in general, the game's production values are as high as ever. Uh, the music sounds quite good as, as it tends to in games in the series and so if you're looking for kind of the big uh, magical Final Fantasy experience then it is certainly to be found here. It's going to be a while before most people in this country play Final Fantasy XI or have a chance to play it. Uh, that's a lot of time that Square can spend uh, kind of building the game, improving it and so forth and it clearly intends to do that in the same way that other uh, massively multiplayer games have developed over time. It'll be interesting to see what happens when it finally comes out in this country, both for the PC, where there's already a lot of stiff competition, but where there's more of a precedent for this style of gaming, and also on the PlayStation 2, where really this game is, is the first of its kind, uh, with all due respect to Fantasy Star Online. For the meantime, we're going to keep playing Final Fantasy XI and see how far we can get, see how many levels we can rack up, see what kind of big bad monsters are in there and, and we'll be back to bringing the details on all that, so stay tuned.